So if you guys don't know, Ariel and I have been friendly to each other over the years. We're not friends or anything, and we've never been close or anything, but we've definitely like known who the other is. Back in the day, in the very, very beginning stages of YouTube, you could customize your homepage, and Ariel used to make my homepages, which was really dope of her. Something that stood out to me over the years about her is that she just seems so afraid. And you guys know one of the things I don't trust in people is their fear. I think one of the most dangerous kinds of human humans to interact with is a fearful one or a weak one. And I don't mean weak in terms of vulnerable. Those are different. I mean weakness of character. But Ariel has always felt kind of weak to me. And mostly because I think she's afraid. I think if you know Ariel's history on YouTube, she was the queer. She was the lesbian. And then after some time, she fell off her pedestal and hit the ground pretty diff like pretty hard. And she became sort of the enemy of the queer people on YouTube. And she never recovered. And so she switched gears. And she became more socially conservative. I don't even know what the word is. Remember that Arielle used to be a sex educator. She used to like, she used to have the clickbaitiest titles, the most sensational titles. And I think she just didn't know what to do after that. And I think that happens. People don't adapt and they don't know what to do. So they pick a bubble that makes sense for them. I don't think Arielle is like grifting in a traditional sense. I'm not really sure she knows who she is. I'm not sure what the kind of relationship she has with herself, but her content is what I would call obsessed people content. So there's types of content creators that are just obsessed. Ariel is obsessed with the non-binaries, the queers, and it's kind of a bummer. I don't think all content creators who have a niche are obsessed, but I think there's a type of obsession that they do have that is like based in kind of paranoia and fear. Everyone is non-binary now. Everybody is an obnoxious queer. Everyone's an obnoxious progressive, and I'm not like this. It's like they make content making fun of other people to sort of be chosen by a side of people that don't think they're too extreme. Like I'm not one of those extreme people. I'm a normal person. When just 30 years ago, your basic normal would have been the weird person. So just a reminder that being queer alone made you the weird person, the person who got fired from jobs and adopting children and being considered a person. And now the same queer people that were ostracized are ostracizing progressives. Human's gonna human. So while we're watching this, I think that Ariel is a category of content creator that's paranoid and scared. And I think she just doesn't know how to be content. She doesn't know how to let people live their lives. But also I wonder how good it must feel to have a group that embraces you again. As a woman, like that's not how it works. There's, to me, it, it's not an identity, it's an experience. But yeah, they invited me out here to do a panel and uh, there was, believe it or not, a, I think female to male drag queen um, that made a petition on change.org to get me taken off of the Mardi Gras website because, quote, I'm a transphobe and a horrible person oh. and a turf and all these things. Uh. Um, and I was going to post the video of mine that went viral on Twitter anyway, and it just made me want to post it even more. Yes. For people trying to deplatform a, quote, basic lesbian, right? Everybody's got to be all these other identities now to be able to speak. But well, I don't even have that. You're just a lesbian. <laughs> you're just a lesbian. You're not allowed to talk I, about I, things. I'm the basic bitch of the male world and that I am just yeah. a white American <laughs> mutt. And you just recently mm -hmm. did a video uh, entitled, I'm a, 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 I'm a lesbian and I'm leaving the insane progressive left. Her channel's doing well, her views are good. Like she found a new home. And I don't know if I could ever fault someone for finding a new home. It's I think the disappointment is just that the home they found was to become sort of bigoted the way that they were discriminated against similarly the way like the way they came up like during the time they came up so i think that's always a bummer i roll my eyes sometimes at religious people but i do not make content talking about throwing religious people under the bus at the end of the day i have religious family and i want to protect them and i believe in their civil liberties and their civil rights and i want to i want to protect them and i hope that they want to protect me but the irony is they don't the truth is the moment you vote lg anti-lgbt and i'm still voting freedom of religion that means one of us is doing the work and one of us isn't and i I understand it's complicated because you have a set of values, but I'm not here to tell you not to live your life. I don't want to make your life harder. And it feels like Ariel and sometimes Blair want to make people's lives harder because their life was hard and they're trying to make it easier. And because it's not easy for them because the progressives make it harder, now the progressives are the enemy. But when the conservatives made their life harder, they were the enemy. Ultimately, you're all making each other's lives harder. So with that said, let's go ahead and give it a watch and remember that these are people on a journey and they're doing what they think is best. Even if it doesn't feel efficient, they're doing what they think is best. I am hot and I am bi and I have mental illness.
Have you ever wondered what it's like being married to a gender fluid person? Every day I make a habit of asking them what their gender is. They answer between the numbers 1 and 10, 1 being more masculine, 10 being more feminine, or they just simply answer neither. So when I asked this today, they answered work. Indeed. We do have a ton of work to do. Why do all of these people think alike, dress alike, look alike? Well, socially, I spoke about this in a video a few weeks ago. Mentally, I think the answer is mental illness, borderline personality disorder being one of those issues. And we're going to talk about Obviously, I've been in remission. I have borderline. It doesn't have to be main character in your life. You can get better. But let's see what Ariel's perspective on it is because the description for this video says it's becoming too common. I'm not sure what that means. About that today. Welcome to another psychological deep dive. Now, one of the ways we are able to diagnose somebody with a mental illness, and this is therapists and doctors included, is by recognizing patterns that they have that are similar to others with that same mental illness. And now in saying that, I am not a doctor, I'm not a therapist, but I am very aware and have been studying these people from afar for a while and have noticed a few patterns. And I'm going to simply use those patterns to show you why I think a lot of these people do have borderline personality. Is that a problem? Can't they get help? So she's going to make the argument that the people she just showed have borderline. Seems inappropriate, but okay. I, she's doing it, see, automatically it sounds like she's doing it to punish them versus I'm doing it to understand them. I don't, do, I don't diagnose people. But on my channel, when we say, oh, I think you have borderline, we're saying it as a positive thing. Like, oh, you have something you can work on. I think she's saying it in a bad way, right? Like it's gross that you're sick. Is that what she's saying? Am I reading that wrong? Which for those of you who do not know is a pervasive pattern of instability of interpersonal relationships, self-image, and effects and marked impulsivity. Borderline personality disorder is something that is usually there for years, right? usually stemming from starting in childhood. The two main issues that we see quite frequently in this are instability and impulsivity. You know, impulsivity, like, uh, I don't know, rapid onset gender dysphoria, or doing absolutely uh, no research on a, a political or social justice trend and hopping onto it. Uh, no, Ariel, already no. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of impulsivity related issues like dyeing your hair constantly or cutting it that could be signs of borderline, but that's not how it works. And this video already is very, very inappropriate, I feel like, because she's trying to punish them with a diagnosis versus giving them a relief of knowing themselves better. So already in bad taste, girl. Because it's popular at that moment. Queer rights, trans rights. We say that in genocide. Impulsivity, on the other hand, is when people- Oh, she said instability, correction in the corner. So she's talking about instability can't control their emotions or have intense changes in their emotions. Why am I transphobic? Why? Am I being transphobic? Why? Shut up. What? Oh, wow. Answer my question. Did we trigger you? I hope you can go rotten, pal, you f***ing wife. Instability, you know, like. Let's see, Ariel has a breakdown when people abandon her for not believing the way she does. Is she borderline because she had a breakdown? Is she borderline because she's paranoid and obsessive and makes content about the same group of people? Or maybe she's like narcissistic or let's see, maybe she has psychosis. See how inappropriate this is? Like, look, again, I don't want to diagnose people as a punishment. I want this to be a liberation moment that your diagnosis doesn't define you. But people being berated and yelled at will eventually make them break down because it's a horrible feeling. If you make fun of a religious person's like God for two seconds, you literally will watch them break down and yell at you. They get offended with just wearing certain clothes. Ultimately, this is not enough information to diagnose somebody, but it isn't enough information to be compassionate to somebody. It is enough information to be compassionate and Ariel is doing quite the opposite, which is disappointing. Um, I don't know, <laughs> changing your gender by the change of the tides and the positions of the moon and the solar eclipse. My labels, identities, pronouns vary day to day, minute to minute, based on how much I feel like explaining myself, how much I feel like confusing people, and how tired I am. This might be a hot take, but <laughs> instead of calling it non-binary, we should just start calling it nonsense because it makes a <laughs> zero. As a community, they cannot... Yeah, it's interesting how she's so obsessed. Like, it's kind of gross. I really don't like this look in people. I think it shows like a like she needs so much therapy, which is, you know, it makes so much sense. She had a huge breakdown. She was impacted so severely by her abandonment. She probably does have a variation of like abandonment issues, obviously. Yeah, this is like super inappropriate. But also, look, mental health 
is expressed. You just saw me make a podcast about my past self and you can see all the ways that I've changed. And sometimes I fit these stereotypes and I have in my life changing my hair constantly, dyeing my hair constantly were symptoms of my borderline because they were methods of control over my life. That doesn't make them morally wrong. And it wasn't wrong that I was moving through my borderline. It doesn't mean, so if Brittany doesn't have weird colored hair now that she's in her remission for her borderline, it must mean people with weird colored hair aren't in remission for their borderline. Like, no, that's not how the math works. Having weird color hair and dyeing it all the time doesn't always mean borderline. It could just mean freedom of expression. I'm into art. I like different colors. I'm a hairstylist. I like to dabble in different presentations. I understand why she's making those leaps of like why she's making those conclusions, but I also don't understand why she's making the conclusion. Like, why is she making the observation? That's the problem I'm having with Ariel's video already or her content in general is like, why are you bullying people for being sick? Like, that's a weird take to bully people for being sick instead of showing compassion and saying like, I wish they would get help. But problem is, is Ariel thinks if they got help, they wouldn't be non-binary. And that's the problem. You're not non-binary because you're mentally ill. Just like you're not mentally ill because you, like you're not religious because you're mentally ill. Some people who have mental illness are religious and some people who have mental illness are non-binary. Being non-binary and being religious doesn't mean you're mentally ill. And I think thinking like that is incredibly dishonest because the human experience is vast and diverse. Believing in a God does not make you insane. It doesn't mean you have psychosis because you think a spirit is alive in the sky. It just doesn't. But some people with psychosis believe there's a spirit in the sky. And if you don't understand the nuance of that, like I really don't think you should be talking. Not even get behind a set definition on this label. Not non-binary as in yeet the teat. Non-binary as in would sometimes like remove and set aside and sometimes would like put back instability in. Okay, first of all, that video was so good. And if you don't get it, you don't get it. But this just comes off like cringy atheist who's going after religious people. It's just cringy. It's so like sad. I just remember being a, a, a an angry atheist and going after religious people and realizing like, I'm no better than them. What am I doing with my life? You know, but that video that she just showed of the non-binary person was amazing. I love non-binary content. So and you know, relationships. I even posted a video about this on TikTok the other day. If you're not following me on there, go do so. I just started posting. And that video was making fun of the current dating pool situation. Inst Wait, let's see her TikTok. Okay. It was making fun of the current dating pool situation. Poly, unicorn, they, them, socialist, kink, and genderless. Okay, first of all, so she's anti-kink. What a hater. She's anti-poly, anti-unicorn, anti-they, them, anti-socialist. I mean, good for you, girl. But yeah, like, what are you just bitter because no one wants to fuck you? I don't know what's happening. She just, like, this is obviously a specific bubble and nobody wants to be the unicorn. Let's be real. But okay, poly, they, them, socialist, kink, genderless. If none of these things are your vibe, go date in like a more liberal town. What is she, what is she angry about that no one wants to date her? Just go, she needs to date in some like, um, where the Democrats are. She's state a Democrat or something. Like just like a, it's like a centrist. You know, what is she angry about? Instability with family. I'm no contact with my family. All. Oh, I know them. All of them. Siblings, parents, cousins, everybody. I had to go through an intense dumpster full of guilt regardless of what most of these people i mean that sucks not being in touch with any of your family is a red flag to me but sometimes because it's a two-way street sometimes it's got to be like that i can understand it being a red flag but sometimes it's got to be like that like if i married a woman i wouldn't have been in contact with my parents because they would have been intolerant to it. It is what it is, right? It could be a red flag or in some people's case, maybe not, right? Let's go to chat for a second. She's angry at herself. She sounds very unhappy. I mean, mm, you know, like she feels threatened by someone else's gender expression. She does. She does feel, that's what I mean, the paranoia and the weakness in people. It really makes me like, what are you doing? She's mad that the options are all, like there's nobody she wants. Well, okay, but like, that's what it is. You're not entitled to a relationship. LJ says she is so hyper-focused on what she doesn't want for her relationships and wonders why she can't find a relationship. She's looking in the wrong places. 100. Pick your bubble. But see, the problem is, is Ariel's in like a conservative bubble and like there's not enough lesbians in that bubble. Nick says she defies herself by what she's not and she hates. Sad. That is so sad, right? Africa says, I think she was just raised right-wing 
Italian Catholic and just happens to be a lesbian. But remember, right? Oh, she's reverting to type. Oh, maybe she is. But Ariel was the queen of lesbian YouTube at one point. I mean, we all watched her. We all knew her. She was very liberal for the time. And she just got upset that she's no longer considered the most liberal. She never considered herself very even political during those days. Ariel wants to feel validated. And when you're seeking validation, Ariel is ironically probably as mentally ill as the people she's making fun of but she doesn't think she is, but obsession, paranoia. What are you doing with your life? You're a grown up. Why is being a grown up this, what are you doing? Ilamadi says she's still bitter because the discourse was trash in 2016 and 17 and Milo Stewart and uh, Riley J. Dennis days, but there's like better discourse now. First of all, I've met Milo. He and I had lunch and Riley, like Riley was fine. Everyone freaked out about her for no fucking reason. That was the irony of it all. Like the irony is that like Riley was fine. Everybody was just freaking out because it was anti-feminist days. And so it's so frustrating, I think, because everyone is like, you're mentally ill. You're mentally ill. You're all mentally ill. Congratulations. Everybody has trauma. This denial that you have trauma is so hilarious to me, but it is her responsibility to get better. The question is, is she ready to get better? And you remember how Blair White had that therapist interview her and showed she's mentally impacted? She has trauma. These people all have trauma and they make fun of people for having trauma. They want to be able to say it without being considered one of those traumatized people. Well, all of those traumatized people who actually admit it, we eventually get help and we eventually hit remission and we eventually are better to people around us and we eventually actually get married and stay married. We eventually do have the relationships we want and we do eventually have the lives we want because we actually can admit to us ourselves that we need help. When you admit to yourself you need help, that is your opportunity to heal. But if you just say out loud like, oh yeah, I've had a rough life, bro, and then you do nothing about it, you're basically admitting I'm traumatized, but I'm not gonna do anything about it. And then you have the audacity to spend your life making fun of other people for being unhinged or mentally ill or not non-binary. Ma'am, look in the mirror. People say about themselves, I honestly don't think they have a consistent understanding of who they are and what they're capable of. In my bio, I have the- Oh my God, you mean people in their early 20s don't know who they are or what they're doing with their life? My God, call the president. Call the president right now. These are young kids. Let them live their life, girl. You're in your 30s and you don't know what the fuck you're doing with your life. Let, leave these kids alone. They're literally kids. Pronouns they, them, unless a pink heart and then a blue heart. Purple for they, them, like non-binary, pink for girl and blue for boy, right? I'd like you all to use they, them for me unless I say otherwise, because for the most part, I always feel somewhere on the non-binary spectrum. They are constantly searching for new words, new ideas, people, even people that they think will help them figure it all out. Funnily enough, except when they actually are given the tools to help themselves, they decide to call that a controlling technique. It's almost like these people just want to stay victims. One of the many ways that colonial mental health, wellness, self-help culture shows up in our society is through the framework of control, power, and domination. And the way that that looks like is using verbiage like we just need to be able to control our thoughts our feelings our mind our bodies this idea that you need to force yourself into a state of discomfort in order to regulate your emotions no it is understanding that at its core you are the only person that is in control of your emotions and control your responses to life situations okay control your responses to life situations and stop making obsessive paranoid content are trying to teach you to control yourself in a good way not not always are good ways for all people i think you need to be able to face yourself not by controlling the thoughts here's philosophy meditation buddhism but by remembering you are not the thoughts the thoughts are not you like the thoughts just are and then you can decide how to interact or act on those thoughts. But you are not your thoughts. You are not how you think. You are how you live your life, or you are a combination of those things depending on how your brain works. I won't even black and white it for you. It's too nuanced. But like your intrusive thoughts, that's not you, girl, okay? Don't listen to your intrusive thoughts. Those are not you. Ariel doesn't understand anything, but more than that, because she's never been able to be compassionate to herself, I just don't think she can, she can be compassionate to other people. Look, do I dislike the really aggressive young people who think they know better than everyone else when they're obviously just mentally ill and troubled? Yes. Do I also hate that in grown men? Yes. Do I hate that in grown politicians? Yes. Hey, do I hate that in everybody regardless of gender? Yes. I don't want to take advice from people who don't walk the walk. The dilemma is, how do you know someone's walking the walk? It's not by them pretending they're walking the walk. It's them having a real understanding of self. That's why Dr. K is so good. And that's why if you watch his like, 
his uh, co collaborations with other YouTubers, you'll see him try to point it out to them and you'll see their inability to get it. And that's the point. They don't get it. They're not connecting the dots. And it's not that you'll get it perfectly, it's that you'll get it eventually is the hope. And also Ariel has a habit of cutting people out of context. So I don't know the full context of that TikTok. Let's, I don't, I, she didn't link in the description because I looked at her description. I don't know the full context of that, that TikTok, but I think they might've some, said something good or something bad, I don't know. So the dilemma with this kind of content is none of these TikToks are played in full enough for me to know the context yet that I've seen. They all seem like they're being cut. So now I don't know if she's taking them out of context because if you don't understand what someone's saying, you're going to think they're crazy. It's like when people who are never raised religious watch religious people and they don't know if the person's being crazy or not. If you don't know what to look for, it's just going to look crazy to you. But people aren't as crazy as you think they are, but they are traumatized. But being traumatized doesn't make you actually crazy. And even when you are crazy, you need love and compassion. And it's not about excusing your bad behavior. It's about recognizing why you're doing it in the first place so you can stop doing it, which is harder than it seems. I wonder if Ariel knows why she makes paranoid and obsessive content about this group of people. I wonder if she knows why she does that because I don't know why. I would love if she could tell us because it's one of the reasons I don't watch her content anymore after all these years. It just seems sad and depressing. Same with Blair and all these other people. Like I don't like people that just go after it. Fresh and fit too. It's all about the women and how much we hate the women. It's just exhausting. But I, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't have an opinion. I obviously have very strong opinions. I'm just saying like, why are you upset? Why are you so obsessed with them? Not all control is bad, right? You control your dating habits, you control your eating habits, don't you? And like any other mental illness, borderline personality disorder is- Oh yeah, sorry, just a reminder that Ariel is literally trying to diagnose people with borderline for no fucking reason. Super inappropriate. And not to show compassion and to love these people, but to make fun of them. I'm sorry, I totally forgot why we were watching this. Inappropriate, Ariel, this is inappropriate. It can be minute to the extreme. I recently spoke to a therapist friend of mine who focuses specifically on queerness and transgenderness, not transsexualism, in regards to borderline personality disorder. And honestly, the results are quite shocking, but not surprising if you followed my- There's nothing wrong with experimenting in your 20s to figure out who you are. I don't believe in regret. If you get surgeries, suck it up, bro, and move on with your life. Okay, everyone has like something they regret, but like, let's move on. I don't care if you experiment with your gender. I've gone back and forth with my own. It's not bad or good because these things aren't the way she thinks they are. She thinks she knows what mental health is when she doesn't even know why she's upset us in the first place. She is not qualified to make this video. Alex says, I beg her to learn about correlation versus causation. Amen. Lee Chin says, it's so sad. Ariel became such a turf. She started as an educational channel and started pandering to the worst people. Yeah, it does suck. Turf energy is the worst energy. I say it to this day, turfs might be the most hateful group of people I've ever met. Using the link in the description below or use ground.news slash Ariel to get 40% off unlimited access. Back to borderline personality disorder. Never thought I would say that in a sentence on this channel. But here we are. There are nine specific traits that you have to look out for according to psychologists. Number one is frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment. This sounds an awful lot like the constant need for validation of whatever they need at that moment. Let's say for their for their gender, for their supposed disability, or just simply why life isn't working out the way they wanted to. Number two is a pattern of unstable and- I can't believe she's doing this. This is so inappropriate. <laughs> What is she doing? Why is she literally looking up borderline personality disorder and then attaching it to a group of people? A whole group of people? What is she doing? This is so inappropriate. I can't believe someone sponsored this video. This is such a weird video. This is, I do not approve of this, but you do you, girl. What? Tense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of idealization and- I like how these people are like, no echo chambers, be independent, think for yourself, <gasps> don't color your hair and be fat and have a nose ring. It's like these people don't understand, like non-binary people are listening to you. Don't be a sheep, don't follow the crowd and do whatever you want. Okay, but instead of guns and going to church, they're dyeing their hair and getting nose piercings. I, I just love that conservatives their whole life taught us to be independent and do what we want and not listen to the government. Okay, I'm gonna get tattoos and dye my hair. They're like, whoa, 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 not like that. You should have been more specific when you told me the rules. And devaluation. Honestly, this sounds an awful lot like going from love bombing to the left eating its own based on whatever rules they changed that day. No. Oh. 
as if conservatives don't do this to people all the time. So this is what I want to talk about. This is why I wanted to cover this video and I knew it. And then we're going to watch Brett Cooper later, which is the same thing. If Brett Cooper deviated from the script, she would be fired. Ariel had to pick a new script so she could be embraced. But Ariel knows, just like the progressives kicked her out, the conservatives will do it too the moment she changes her tune. Everybody does it. That's what bubbles are. Bubbles are an agreed upon perception. It's why when we have these arguments and people are like, you're never going to be right if it doesn't end up in this conclusion. Yeah, that's just a bubble. You know for a fact you got to be slightly like a sheep to be in a bubble because sheep are a herd and they work together. It's not a negative to be a sheep. It's saying you're a part of a collective in a community. And I'm saying that's okay, but that's why I'm less of a community person, like community community person. But Ariel wants a community. She's desperate for a community. So she picked one. But if she deviated from the script, they would also kick her out. I don't know why she's acting like this is specific to progressives. Number three, identity disturbance. Markedly and persistently unstable self-image or sense of self. We spoke about that briefly in this video before we talked about instability. Maybe they changed their name, their hair, their gender, their sexuality, their pronouns. This is also a very big reason why these people are easily controllable. Again, they all look, dress, act, think, are alike. Because- Come on, come on, don't make me bring out the boomer dad memes with the sunglasses and the Trump hats. This is the, this is the thing that popped all my bubbles. I started to pop all of my bubbles when I realized like, oh, we all dress and talk the same. Guys, our algorithms are so similar. Even us in this community, we all gravitate towards each other because we like each other and we understand each other. Even when we disagree, we must have some overlap. We watch similar people or we know certain names. The fact that I bring up Ariel's name and you guys know who she is means we're in similar bubbles. You know how many people around the world have no idea who this girl is? We all look the same because we all gravitate towards people who are like us. Humans like people who are like them. We're tribal. So this idea that she's like, you notice how all the progressives look the same? Yeah, that's on purpose. Just like it's on purpose that all the conservatives look the same and all the Mormons look the same. Yes, it's on purpose. Everyone pretends it's not, but it is on purpose. That's why we have judgments about like, mm, you didn't groom today and you don't look good and you're not dressing for Sunday best. And oh, you have to have the Arabs have a standard. People look at you because you're not dressing like them. I don't know why she's acting like this is special, except that's how bubbles think. Bubbles think they're the most unique thinkers ever. See, I don't think there's any unique ideas. I think everyone is just the same, but their variation of color. You know what I mean? The fact that she literally thinks this is specific to progressives. Ma'am, this is humans. Humans are gonna human. Stephanie said, that's why on Wednesdays we, were, we wear pink, true. And this is what I point about bubbles. So if you guys are sitting in a bubble right now and you're feeling very specific about a thing, Remember, that is just perception. All of this is just perception. Because they don't know who they truly are. A quick note from a therapist friend of mine. Most people don't know who they are, guaranteed. That's why you all settle for relationships. It's why you're miserable. It's why you're obsessed about what other people are doing instead of using what other people are doing to make your life better. See how Ariel isn't using any of this to make her life better? She's just using it to make fun of them. People with borderline personality disorder typically have identity confusion ranging from mild to extreme. The lack of a developed identity can make the idea of having a certain and stable identity very appealing since identity is an anchor for stability in one's thoughts behaviors emotions etc people with borderline personality disorder are often very black and white thinkers like narcissists either you are with me or against me hm? that doesn't sound familiar at all they start this is so wrong. This is so funny. Like she does not even understand what she's reading. It's so interesting. Fernanda says, I don't know much about her, but I'm a ba because I'm a baby, but would you say she's a two? Oh, Ariel's definitely a two, right? I think she might quote help some people, but at the same time, I'm not sure if anything she's saying is actually helpful. Oh, she's helping people in that bubble who think like her. That's what I mean. When she calls other people sheep or she says, we're all sheep. We all belong in herds. We all have group communities. We all believe in bubbles. This idea that anyone is truly an independent thinker, you wish. This is the ego talking. The ego says you are special when you are not. The ego convinces you you are the only person who's a free thinker and everyone else is a sheep. We're all sheep, girl. We all just color our wool different. We all belong in herds. We all belong to tribes. We all belong to belief systems. Fishy says, I think it's funny she's using BPD. Why not OCD? When gender OCD is a known thing, why not autism? Why not prescribe these people OCD or autism and demonize them? Ooh, mm, mm, mm. almost like she's using heavily stigmatized disorders to, in order to stigmatize trans and MB people. Yep, Ingrid said sheep, uh, sheep are cute. Sheep are cute, but this is just silly. This is so inappropriate. This is a very inappropriate video. I'm not saying she's a bad person. I'm saying she's inappropriate. 
because I don't need I don't really need to believe in bad and good people in this instance. I just think this is heavily inappropriate. You know what I mean? Certainly need and lack ambiguity to decrease stress. Not to mention that people with BPD have unstable self image and self worth and are hypersensitive to invalidation. Also, <laughs> Doesn't sound familiar at all, does it? This woman had a literal breakdown on the internet because she wasn't being validated by trans people. This woman had a breakdown on the internet for years because she wasn't being validated. Literally years. We had to watch Ariel scream and cry and kick her feet because people didn't vibe with her. That's what I'm saying. Watch these content creators they always say they're independent and they're not validation seeking. But the moment you can't hang out, like people don't want you to hang out with them. They're like, oh, what do you mean I can't hang out with you? What do you mean I can't hang out with you? All these people that make fun of progressives for being validation seeking, they are the most validation seeking people ever. Discourse that Ariel's can't see the forest for the trees, quoting Dr. K, exactly. But they don't understand that they're validation seeking because they think it's weak. But that's why they are weak, because they're validation seeking in the wrong ways. That's why they bully people and burn bridges, because they don't want to be seen as weak, but they just, they'd rather be seen as crazy. So here we are, paranoid, crazy, and obsessed. Invalidation related to identity is extra intense to those with BPD because it is perceived as an attack on their identity, which is a source of intense insecurity. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Number four, impulsivity in at least two areas that are potentially self-damaging. For example, spending a ton of money frivolously, being hypersexual and slutty, substance abuse, reckless driving, binge eating. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course I can't put the tree down now. I'm plus size and on a plane. Of course I have to shimmy down the aisle sideways. I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you that I have realized that a lot of people that probably have BPD are, in fact, highly sexual. Even though I'm covered. God, she's so mean. She's so ugly. Not physically, just emotionally, like as a person. This is a woman who made a reputation on YouTube by sexualizing every single thumbnail. This woman used to review basically exclusively sex toys and every thumbnail was her objectifying a woman and being hypersexual. That is how Ariel got famous on YouTube. That's how we all knew her. She was a sex educator and she would be extra slutty, like a thousand percent. Yes, sometimes promiscuity is common with people with borderline because they're seeking validation. Ariel is a YouTuber. It's like, that's the epitome of narcissism and validation seeking. Like you're on the internet and you think you're worthy of people's time. Like that's our narcissism talking, not that we have NPD, but like to be a content creator is validation seeking behavior. The fact that she doesn't understand that is so interesting. Like there's no humility in her. It's so sad. Her spirit is so distorted. It's so interesting. <laughs> And my body's covered because there's a little bit of titty showing. Y'all feel discomfortable misgendering me. So what? Number five, recurring. Yeah, it's sad. Like you're basically bullying mentally ill people. But at the same time, I understand the desire to point out how weird it is. But I wish it was, again, for something greater than just making fun of people. Suicidal behavior, gestures or threats or self-mutilating behavior. Number six, effective instability due to a marked reactivity of mood. The two videos that you just watched that were side by side were literally posted by the same person in the same day. Here's another note from my therapist friend. Mild to extreme dissociation from one's physical body, more likely those with BPD, depending on whether they are raised with attuned, example, aware of childhood emotions and needs or abusive parents. Dissociation can lead to a feeling of dis disconnecting from one's body, which can also be very disturbing. This makes confusion. Thompson says, Brittany, what are your thoughts on Buck Angel? Curious. I mean, I, I like, I mean, Buck Angel is historically so important to the movement. And without Buck Angel, I think, I, th I think his work has overall been a net positive for the world, but I also think that him and I would probably disagree on some more nuanced takes, but ultimately I've always liked Buck Angel. I've never really had a problem with him. I don't agree with him in a lot of his points, but I also think hurt people hurt people. Look, I've made content on again and off again where it sounds like I'm very anti-non-binary and that I'm very pro-non-binary and it gets confusing. And it's really just about certain people who happen to be non-binary. Let's be real. It's not the non-binary people. It's certain people who happen to be non-binary. They piss you off. Then you make a video. And then all of a sudden it sounds like you're anti-non-binary. But you're not. You're just like fucking, I don't like this kind of person. So is Ariel and all these people, do they really hate non-binary people? Or is it just the annoying people they don't like? Because like, I don't really hate conservatives. I just hate conservatives that think that they literally aren't sheep. 
and I don't even hate them. I'm just frustrated with them because it's like, why are you acting like you're not suppressing free speech? You're not trying to control people's bodies. Like you're not trying to get the government involved in stuff. And it's because of bubbles, which is why I say, like, go of the bubbles and make your own. Because look, everybody wants to control everybody, which is why, like, it's frustrating to live in the world because everyone's so afraid of each other. Let's be real. You bitches are not afraid of bears. You are afraid of people. You don't make videos talking about how dangerous bears are. It's not like you make obsessive paranoid content about the fear of bears because you know people are dangerous. You know people are the most dangerous to each other. And so you're constantly afraid of one another and you're freaking out and then you make paranoid content about them. People are only scary when they're afraid or when they're incredibly motivated to push an agenda. And I think that's the problem. Cognitive says, is that a fair categorization? There are many liberals and conservatives that accept LGBT people but just don't agree with specific issues like sports, bathrooms, forced pronouns. Tell that to the politics. Look at policy. You have to look at policy. What main Republican candidate is speaking in favor of LGBT rights? What, who is the most popular Republican governor right now or was, was DeSantis? And look how Florida is going. Very anti-LGBT. So with peace and love, like I love my Republican family, but they openly talk about voting anti-LGBT. That's why they're voting Trump. That's why they vote for Republicans. That's why they're pro DeSantis or that's why they like conservatives who are anti-LGBT. They think it's better for America. So like with peace and love, I'm never going to vote anti-religious rights, but they're going to vote anti-my rights because their religion says to. So with peace and love, everybody wants to think they have the most nuanced take and they're the sheep and everyone, blah, 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 blah. You live in a bubble, bro. We all live in bubbles, but come on. Vision about or even distributed attributes towards one's body very easy. Number seven, chronic feelings of emptiness. People with borderline personality disorder tend to have hatred or simply panic when around those who are not validating their identity. And am I the reason people even form personality disorders, specifically borderline, but even narcissism, is because severe lack of compassion and love growing up and invalidation. It is about inval... She's saying validation like it's an evil word when she had a breakdown on the internet for not being validated. We all want to be validated, you sociopaths. We all want to be validated, even the sociopaths. God bless. Shout out to my um, antisocial personality disorders. But like, we all want to be validated. The idea that Ariel isn't getting that borderline is because of invalidation in such a pattern that it causes abandonment and a lack of knowing the self as a child. Child. So when you make fun of people and you're like calling them borderline as if to say they're disgusting, you're basically just bullying a kid, bro. You're bullying a child. Like validation is so key. That's why we have tribes. It's why we have community. It's why you want to fall in love or you want to have a relationship with your parents. Validation is a necessary tool. It is a necessary tool. That's why you usually do hang out with people that are similar than you. And it's why you probably only slightly hang out with people that are slightly different than you. So the idea that she's saying validation is wrong is insane. Now here's the dilemma. And here's the thing I had to learn through therapy, DBT, was how I saw validation, who was going to give it to me, and in which way was it actually reasonable? Because I didn't want empty validation, but I also didn't want everyone to feel obligated to give me all types of validation constantly, but just when it was reasonable. Like I give validation. Hey, you did great. You guys did great today. Good job. Hey, I really like the way you dressed your hair today are like, oh, wow, like your earrings are so nice. That is validation. Ariel looks very pretty in this video. That's validation. You're giving people like, hey, I saw you edited this video really, really well. It was great. That is validation. Like you're giving people like, oh, cool. I thought so. I was worried. Like, I'm so glad. Thank you for validating that. Or, hey, I think I'm afraid of choosing the bear in the forest. That's valid, dude. Okay, good. I, I, I kind of needed that validation that I was okay. Men are mad right now because they're not getting the validation they need that their feelings are hurt. We get it. You need the validation. But like Ariel doesn't want to give it to the non-binary. Some women aren't going to want to give it to the men. Seek validation from the right people, the right people who can give it to you. Because if you look for it from the wrong people, you're going to get triggered, bro. Whether you're a man or a conservative or non-binary or whatever. In my opinion, it's very likely because there is actually no real base of truth to it. It is built on lies, whether it's lies that they tell themselves or lies that society tells them. Listen to what this trans man said about having both gender dysphoria and borderline personality disorder. I think borderline is, is primarily about identity and um, feeling safe. A lot of my behaviors were um, like avoidant behavior and isolating and searching for, <laughs> searching for identity, searching for sort of healthy ego with the gender stuff, I finally was enacting who I was on the inside. Projection is also extremely common in those that suffer with BPD. And 
It's like she's trying to say that if you're trans, you're borderline. So if you get help for your borderline, you won't be trans. Man, turf takes suck, bro. They really suck. And they are likely to project that hatred onto others. Tired of white cis women being more dedicated to being called a healer than actually doing the work to be a healer. The only thing that you're worried about healing is your bruised ego and being confronted with your complacency in genocide and your obsession with upholding privilege. We do not need more nice white women. Are you kidding me? And stop asking marginalized people to do the work for you because you don't feel comfortable with it. I don't know what they just said made total sense to me. When she, like they're not talking about all white women. They're talking about very sp nice white women is a category of white women. And I don't think anyone wants to hang out with them, not even themselves. Nice white women are a very specific type of white woman. I don't think Ariel is smart enough to know that. That's why categorization is so big for me because it's, n it's a, v I don't think Ariel, does she know what a nice white woman is? It's a very specific thing. I'm praying because we need you. We need something down here because this is just ridiculous. Hating white women is a projection. This they don't hate white women. They hate nice white women. They even categorized it specifically. They even specified which kind of white woman. Not even white. Nobody likes nice white women. You know who that is, right? Those are the attention seeking, narcissistic seeking white women who say they're helping you, but they're really just doing it for like the validation seeking in a way that probably Ariel wouldn't like. Momo says, I'm not smart enough either. What is a nice white woman? It's not about smartness. Okay, it's about knowing categorization. Nice white woman is a category of women who usually either pretend they're helping, um, they're like raising money, they're, oh, I'm here to help the black community, but it's not about the black community, it's about them. It's very specific. Why did they say white women are committing genocide? They didn't say that. You're listening skills are off cognitive they didn't say that white women are committing genocide that's not what they said let's rewatch it and tired of white cis women being more dedicated to being called a healer so white women who take credit for being a part of the community without actually doing the work to be a healer fake nice yes ingrid fake nice than actually doing the work to be a healer the only thing that nice white women are just abusers nice in quotation so not all white women specific oh i'm sorry the video is not on my bad my bad nice white women are just abusers specifically nice it's very specific okay it's not all white women it's not it's not every single white woman on the planet it's specific categories that you're worried about healing is your bruised ego and being confronted with your complacency in so obviously the white women that are anti or not speaking up for palestine or the genocide that's happening there, they can feel if you're on the other political side, like you're just pretending to care about minority rights when it really matters you don't speak up. So obviously like this is a very specific bubble with very specific language, which is all bubbles. So Ariel just doesn't get it. And so she's coming to a conclusion that's wrong. Ah, oh, Momo says that might be a bubble thing. I didn't know that term. I would say white savior. White savior is another term. Yeah, that's, I think that's about the same thing, right? White right savior complex, for sure. So Ariel's conclusion is, we hate white women. When the conclusion should have been, I hate this specific category of white women. See, everyone acts like it's all or nothing. When it's so specific, the world is diverse. JJ says like doing volunteer and humanitarian stuff to be better than everyone will will stoop down to help your poor soul bless your heart exact bless your heart girl bless your heart not need more nice white women are you kidding me and stop asking marginalized people to do the work for you because you don't feel comfortable with it so there it is that's a very specific white woman you would only know what any of this means if you're in politics uh you know you're volunteering your time none of those none of those things should make sense to you unless you're dabbling in some sort of political or raising money venture hating white women is a projection this person is said is said thing <laughs> these people hate having their identities invalidated and then project that hatred onto others anger or difficulty controlling anger example frequent displays of temper constant anger reoccurring physical fights people with borderline personality disorder usually have a lot of anger and are looking for a justified way to express it or to release it for queer people it might be you mean sick people are sick <gasps> oh my god ariel is so smart bro sick people are sick oh my god bro holy shit the projection of you know you hate trans people you hate queer people you want us dead and then they go out and and, and tear up a rape center for that are that's meant for you know biological women only for black lives matter people it might be burning down an entire city when somebody with bpd has an identity which they are trying to be so sure of threatened it feels like a profound threat to their stability some may leave the realm of rational and become 
briefly psychotic. People with BPD well, are already- mm, uh, you need to be careful with that word. I don't know if that's appropriate. Typically oppositional and defiant of others. So this opposition combined with the gaping and fearsome emptiness of having no identity, which is invalidation, tends to promote a vicious response, especially when such a response is sh sanctioned by their community. I suspect this is why we are seeing such a terrorist-like response from certain trans people, such as stab transphobes or some other cult. Yeah, well, obviously that's like the extreme and in insane, but that's the problem is like, so here's the dilemma we have. Okay. So the progressives who are crazy will say like stab transphobes. That's really bad, right? That narrative is disgusting, right? Because I don't believe in violence. But then you'll have somebody say, oh, I don't want to hurt you, but I want to take away your civil rights and I want to force you um, out of your job and I want to keep you away from our children and I don't want you to adopt. But I would never advocate for violence against you. Does anyone see the issue? So both are bad, okay? It's just one is packaged differently, so you tolerate it more than the other one. And that's the problem we're gonna have is that the stab transphobes is really bad. That is like deplorable. Like those people are dangerous and should go to therapy and be better. And then you come into a repackaged way of saying, I wanna take away your civil rights. And everyone's like, well, you know, that's not as bad. That's sane and reasonable. It's reasonable to wanna take away people's civil rights. It's so reasonable and sane. Number nine, transient or stress-related paranoid ideation or severe disassociative symptoms. Here's what my friend said. People with borderline personality disorder have little to no internal organ- By the way, not all people, borderline is such a spectrum. Everyone experiences it so differently. And though these things could be experienced by everyone in it, it's always on a spectrum and it's different. And none of these things make you a bad person. And a lot of borderlines throw this at themselves anyways. Yes, it's horrible if you're hurting other people because you're sick. Get help. But know that you don't need to be bullied to get help. You just need to decide if it's within your values to stop hurting yourself and other people. And then even when you're better, because Ariel hurts people all the time with her views. Does she have borderline? Because even people who aren't exhibiting borderline symptoms can hurt other people. And Ariel is very, very, like she's very hurtful to people. She's like a very mean person. But also it's probably because she's really hurt because she was seeking validation she never got and had to have a breakdown on the internet because of it, which is really difficult. She's making a lot of really inappropriate assumptions right now about people. And this is definitely a net negative for society, Ariel's content. Organization due to lack of internal stabilizing features like identity. So they are so attracted to cults and other external sources that assign an identity and their structure, predictability, and stability. People with BPD tend to experience dissociation and quite easily. They are also able to experience psychosis, which is not reality, far more easily. Um... Is that true? That borderlines experience psychosis? I don't know. I've never experienced psychosis. I don't know anyone with borderline who had specifically psychosis, but maybe. But also, like, why are you saying it like that? But I mean, that's that means you're sick. You're just explaining that people are sick. Like, that's all she's doing. She's just like, hey, do you know people are sick? It's like, okay. I can't tell what the point of this is. Like, she's saying all non-binary people have borderline. This is so weird. Easily than the average person due to some complicated psychological mechanisms. Dissociation and even mild psychosis is a recipe for being able to hold very strange beliefs about oneself. And this is his final note. People with BPD are- Also medical professionals disagree all the time. Borderline is a construct. All these things are constructs. They're not black and white and they aren't totally true. What we call borderline might be something else in the future. So just FYI, all of this is just a construct. And if you watch Dr. Kirkonda, who's a therapist and a scientist, and he talks on YouTube about these things, like he will say they are a construct, so you should be careful and you should understand that it doesn't mean you're a bad person because you have these things. Like your borderline doesn't make you a bad person, your values do, okay? Your homosexuality doesn't make you a bad person, your values do. Your religion doesn't make you a bad person, your values do. Very likely to Whatever get their means. stability from external sources, such as those who the, who they associate with, right? Their group of friends, their echo chamber. Borderline individuals are also highly suggestible and very easily able to be influenced, especially by those who they idolize. Hello, Jeffrey Marsh. They tend to dissolve into the identity of those around them. Hence, why do they all look like this? Up until yesterday, I worked at Blunt Pretzels. I asked the general manager to stand up for trans rights and against our genocide, and he laughed in my face. The owner 
His father is a Nazi. His son is the general ma manager. And that is the end of this psychological deep dive. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you go and check. Yeah, I think some people are bad with categorization. I think she's being bad at categorizing people with borderline. And I think a lot of people are bad at categorizing people as Nazis. I think people are just bad at categorization. Check out Ground News. They are an amazing sponsor and have been helping out this channel for quite some time. Go to ground.news. I think that's the problem is like, I think what I would like to say to the world and what tool I'd like to give you is you're probably bad at categorization. We probably all are. We assume people are certain things when they're not. Like we assume that, oh my God, that's a Nazi or, oh, that's that's a bigot or, oh, that's a homophobe. Are you sure? Oh, that's a bad person. This is, the, are you sure? And then how are you making that judgment? What are the, what's the data you're using? She didn't present any proper data. Is it Andromeda? Says, I think Brittany's extremely intentional at being better at categorization and changing at the de that depending on the new data. Well, I do love categorization, right? I just love it. It's like a thing I love to do. And I actually look at it like that versus other people might not. But it's like my favorite way to view the world is categorization. And I also, a part of it is that I just don't find it offensive where I think other people find it offensive to be categorized because it insinuates some sort of like lack of complexity or lack of nuance or lack of like a uniqueness or something. But see, I don't think I'm special. I don't think anyone's special. I think we're just animals on a planet. I just think that... We're here living a life and we're making decisions based off perception. And a lot of it's going to be universally like pretty valid, right? Ultimately, we're not all going to get along. Two perfectly good people don't necessarily get along. I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da,